So the foundation is a collection of three different schools, all of which have their own distinct identity. You have King's Horford, which is our rural Muddy Knees Prep School, which is to the north of the city, which celebrates the great outdoors as well as academic excellence. You have King St Albans, which originated as the choir school for the cathedral uh, and now indeed does provide the choristers, boys and girls choristers, for the cathedral, but also celebrates a growth mindset mentality uh, and also academic excellence and lots and lots of sports and activities. And then you have King's Senior School, 890 pupils, uh, a traditional school which has very high ambitions, uh, wanting pupils to be curious, to be kind and to be confident. But in addition to that, making sure they get the best academic results possible, whilst having the most extraordinary amount of extracurricular opportunities available to them. I wouldn't change things about King's. What I want to do with King's is develop it, because I think what we've got here is a wonderful, wonderful operation, a great school. But I think there's lots we can be doing. And every school, every organisation needs to keep the cement mixer turning, both physically and metaphorically. There's ambitious building work that we've got. There's lots of ambition to improve our curriculum, especially at sixth form level. And also looking at the way in which we look after those pupils as they come into the school in year seven and eight, that pastoral care, that sense of nurture, that love, that support is so important to us. I'd like to think that they would find me approachable. Uh, one of the things that I've done from the very start has been to always teach a history class and it's become uh, one of the most enjoyable three periods of my time as head, but also has enabled me to really get to know those pupils and those year groups. So by the time I've been here for five years, I have a really good knowledge of pupils going up from year nine all the way up to year 13. Personally, I get great pleasure from filling my kids with highly calorific sugar-based goods. And uh, in Worcester, there is the most amazing shop called Shakeaway. Uh, and Shakeaway produces just the most extraordinary delicious uh, milkshakes. And so I suppose a bit of a, a bit of an extravagance is going there, uh, possibly for my children, but probably for myself as well. I've got many heroes. Um, I, people I'm inspired by um, are probably political leaders who have led with a real uh, conscience, a real moral conscience. Um, I've been inspired educationally by people such as Tony Little, who was uh, my headmaster at Oakham and then at, uh, he was at Eton. Um, but without sounding trite, and bear with me because this could sound trite and a bit naff, when a headmaster is being asked by an education magazine to tell them who their hero is. Uh, I, I find the way in which some of my pupils, especially my heads of school, have um, managed to purport themselves um, and be during the most recent pandemic, I found that really inspiring. And they have catalyzed me to want to ensure that we perpetuate the brilliance that is King's. So it does sound a bit naff, but a lot of the time it's the people who I work with and the pupils I lead, that they're my heroes and heroines. I have heard that it's quite difficult to get the Flintstones in the Middle East. Did you hear that? Because the majority in Dubai can't get it, but those in Abu Dhabi do. My go-to karaoke song. Uh, there's, there's inferences within that question. Firstly, that I ever go to karaoke uh, to start with. And uh, karaoke uh, in my list of hobbies um, isn't very much up there. But if I had to sing anything, I suppose, to a karaoke song, it would probably be something by Sting and the Police, along those lines. A do, 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 da, da, da. A phrase I use the most, but I don't think it's an overuse, is a phrase that I say to pupils on a regular basis and to staff. And that's uh, the following, that success in life is not measured by how high you fly, but by how well you bounce. And by that, I mean by how you come back from disappointment, how you come back from failure, and how you dust yourself down and build yourself up. Because in this world, everyone is going to have to encounter failure at some point, and it's how we react to that and how we build forward from that that makes us the stronger human beings. I think the, 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 the superpower I'd like the most would probably be to turn back time 
and in some way try and uh, stop any form of um, pandemic uh, and have a chance perhaps to have had uh, two years as headmaster here without feeling as I was constantly driving a dinghy while spinning plates and shooting crocodiles. Um, so that to me would be would be great. Um, but um, superpower wise, I, I'm, I'm very happy with the um, privileges and the responsibilities I have at the moment. I think that's probably enough. I don't think we can measure legacy necessary in bricks and mortar or uh, in buildings, but I think we can measure it in uh, success of individuals. And so I'd like my legacy to be a school where pupils have achieved their ambitions, where they have learned valuable lessons, where they can then go and develop as a community after Kings, as part of the old Begonian community, um, and where they have ultimately learned that in life it is important to be curious to be caring, but also to be confident. Mm -hmm.